good morning welcome to the happy van you're very very welcome come on in grab yourselves a cuppa and let's have a catch up about what i've been crafting this last week i hope you're all well i hope you've had a good week since we spoke last i can't believe it's another week and we're now the end of august the time is just flying by we as you know um we come to the caravan after work Sunday late afternoon and we go straight back to work Wednesday morning. We leave here about six o'clock Wednesday morning. But no sooner as are we home on Wednesday cooking dinner, then it feels like we're sort of only a breath away from coming back on Sunday. I just can't believe how quick time is going. We're still um, in full throes of getting ready for our busy season. Um, when Southern Wall now is about 10 days away, something like that. And I'm very much starting to get that feeling of overwhelm of, yeah, just general anxiety about going. Perhaps I shouldn't say anxiety because it's not clinical anxiety. You know, I just feel nervous about going. Um, yeah, it's a lot of work, you know, it's a lot of investment of time and resources and money to do a show. And we've never done Southern Wall show before. So there's always that. Oh, when are we going to come? <laughs> or come to see us. I, I know the show's well attended. I know the show's incredibly well attended, but it doesn't mean they're going to come and see us, does it? Anyway will be will be that is out of my control it's the biggest show we've ever done we we typically do three shows a year we start our year with Wonderwall in April um, and we typically end it with Yarndale in September if they accept us that's not a given we have to apply every year but touch wood you know and then we're hopefully now going to slot one in between somewhere. So we do a three a year, usually. And, you know, that's not many. But when we do do a show, we really do like to show up and and come. And we have the biggest stand we can. And apart from Yarndale, because they do some monstrous size stands and we don't have one of those. But at all of the shows, we have the biggest stand available. And... You know, we fill it and we really try to showcase ourselves. If you don't know, I run a yarn dyeing company, Lay Family Yarn, with my husband, Nick. And, yeah, we like to come. We like to show our wares and take pride in our work and really highlight and showcase what we do. So it's, it is a lot of work to get there. And my knitting is still all about samples, really, for Southern Wool. So I've got oh, three new finished objects to show you and I've got no sort of works in progress, which if you've been here for a long time, you will know. And that's not normal. You know, I don't normally churn out lots of finished projects. I have really, really been focusing on getting these samples made. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed the knitting of them, thoroughly enjoyed them, and one you, you'll you see. Well, no, that's not fair. I've en truly enjoyed all of them uh, equally. I'm fidgeting. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> distracting myself. I'm fidgeting. I feel all, I feel out of sorts. I watched a programme I shouldn't have watched whilst I was having my lunch. I watched um, a BBC documentary that was on last night about Amy Dowden. Um, she's a dancer in Strictly Come Dancing and it was about her cancer journey. And obviously I cried all the way through it and it, I just feel a bit unsettled now. So stop fidgeting. Take a deep breath. <laughs> so yeah, it's not usual for me just to churn out lots and lots of finished objects. I do usually show you works in progress and show them as they develop over the the coming weeks but it just so happens that at the minute every minute every spare second i am knitting if i'm stirring risotto i'll get a few rows in 
it literally is like that and um i can't say i've enjoyed that if i'm honest knitting or well, my crafting for me is my relaxation and whilst yes it's interlinked with my work it's not i don't consider it work i should and nick and i have spoke several many many times about carving out time to allow myself to knit during work time but it just never happens there's always just so much to do and strangely i feel guilty if i take my knit into the studio and i sit and knit while nick's dying yarn or it just yeah it just doesn't sit well I, I feel i feel guilty i feel which is silly because having things to show is is part of our marketing strategy if you like isn't it so but anyway autumn is definitely in the air which i am not cross about august for me is the perfect part of summer certainly mid mid august in that the sun still shines occasionally there's still yeah the sun's still there and it, it allows you the freedom to do things that we all enjoy in summer so we can go for walks without needing big heavy coats on and taking umbrellas and things you can hang your washing outside and know it's going to be dry and warm it drives warm beautifully but the sting of the heat, the, that real fierceness of heat has gone from the sun, at least here in the UK. But best of all, quarter past nine, half past nine, lights off, it's dark. And that, that's what I really, really enjoy, that it's dark when I go to bed. I love that. But there's definitely, definitely a sense of autumn in the air. We've had a couple of mists now on the river. Our studio, if you don't know, is on the River Severn in Ironbridge. And um, yeah, in the morning now, because we, we go to work quite early. We're there before seven o'clock where that nighttime temperature is just coming down and that daytime temperature is not quite come up. We get in all the mist on the river, which is just glorious. Love it. Love, 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 love. Anyway, so knitting. It's all knitting this week. Although just this morning I was talking to my friend Belinda from the Bell and Stitch podcast. I'm sure you all know Belinda. She's a darling lady. If you don't know, I highly recommend her podcast. I will link it down below. Um, um, oh, Belinda's another, another podcaster. I've wormed my way into their WhatsApp group. <laughs> Yeah, so I was chatting with Belinda this morning and she was showing this glorious crochet blanket on her latest video and it's got pom-poms all around the edge. Well, I was sold. I'd really like one from this sofa here. So I was looking, it's in Aran weight. No, I'm not a crocheter. I can do a treble stitch to make a cluster. That, that's it. Um, I can go there and back if I look on a YouTube video how to do the fancy business at the end. I can't do a square without a friend being sat with me to show me corners and things. But, you know, obviously you've got YouTube. But she showed this blanket. Oh, it was glorious. So I think once, once show season comes to an end and I can, sa I can see some point show knitting i then can perhaps cast on a nice cozy elm weight blanket for there and it would be in the color of our cut oh you can't see shall i turn you around it would be in the colors of our curtains here so it would be sort of blues and grays and silvers that sort of thing so that would be nice but for now let's focus so what have i been making I showed you the Ruthie shawl last week when we spoke and then after we spoke I put Ruthie to one side. I'd knit on her kind of solidly for a good week um, so I left Ruthie to one side and had a work on some other samples that were sort of a, a quick quick fix. Sort myself out. 
And the first thing I cast on and finished was this hat. Told you autumn's coming. Oh, I love wearing hats. Love, 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 love wearing hats. Isn't it fab? So this is a... Oh, I can't wait to walk. go for a walk in the morning in a hat. I was tempted this morning, actually. It's not cold, but it's really windy. And by the lakes and the water there, it gets really quite windy. So I was tempted this morning, but I'm resisting. I'm, I'm withholding that joy for another week or two. So I wanted to do some hat samples, not least because we're going to be starting to stock these pom-poms. Um, and obviously a pom-pom needs a vessel to show itself off. So yeah, who's that? Those spec savers got to go for my eye test. This is going to, this hat will be on our show stands, but it's going to be one of Megan's Advent Sunday gifts. So that's why we've got the baby blue. I was contemplating a dark grey, which I really like, but Megan will love the baby blue. So this is knitting our Seasons of Mist colourway, which is appropriate for this time of year, isn't it? And it's knit in four ply held double and Surrey alpaca. I wanted to do this in four ply held double as opposed to DK for a show sample because I so often do that. I I have and I'm sure most of most of us are the same. Maybe not, let me know in the comments. But I suspect most of us have more skeins of sock yarn, fingering weight yarn than we do DK in our stash. Certainly more single skeins. Um, you know, when we go to shows, we're wooed by those those pretty single skeins, aren't we? So I've been holding them double. And another reason is in, in our shop, we certainly stock more. We probably have three times as many colours on the four ply than, as we do on the DK. Um, why? Because it sells better. Simple as that. So I wanted to do some samples using the DK weight pattern but showing how to adapt it with the four ply yarn. Um, yeah, and it's worked really well. And you know how fastidious Nick is with, if you know Nick, he's a real perfectionist. He was a master builder for all his working career. So measurement and finite detail is super, super important to Nick. And I got him to measure me um, on my knitting needle. I had three or four stitches in double knit yarn and then three or four stitches in fingering weight held double. And the size of the stitch on the needle is exactly the same as in the width of the stitch is exactly the same. I've done a swatch showing DK on its own and four ply held double and my gauge is exactly the same. So I really do think that they are interchangeable. I know when I talk about this with customers at shows, they are concerned about the cost implication that they're only getting half the yardage per... People think they're getting more yarn for their 100 for their £18.50 by buying four ply rather than DK. But it's exactly the same. If you were to hold, oh, hang on, I lose my words. Oh, we're off again. Which way around is it? Yeah, when I said to customers, get the four ply, hold it double, they think they're going to need twice as much yarn than if they were to just buy DK but you absolutely are getting the same yardage. So in a DK skein, you get 225 metres. In a four ply, you get 450. If you hold the four ply double, you halve that to 225, which is exactly the same as a DK weight skein of yarn. And when you have that face-to-face -face conversation with people, it's like light bulb, you know? 
so yeah i think i think it was it was something i wanted to have as a talking point for this for the shows so that's what i've done so this hat um i don't want to say it's a pattern it's not a pattern it's a recipe that i've created with some basic knitters knowledge <laughs> I've held for the cuff, I've done one by one twisted rib, as you can see, and I've held that singularly. There's no fluff in there so that if you do get that irritation of the the mohairs or the Surrey alpaca silks, there's none of that on your skin at all. That ribbing is just the four ply held double and it's only for the body of the hat I've introduced the um, the fluffy. And I really like the texture. I really like the texture. We're going to be doing some kits for the shows and I'm going to print some copies of this pattern, this recipe card, if you will, so that anybody wants it can have a copy. And then after the shows, again, we'll be doing a promo with the pom poms and things. I love these pom poms. Oh, I've undone it. Let me tighten it up a bit. There we go. So that's my first project. Oh, can't wait. Oh, it will soon be time. I was saying to Jeff um, this morning, he was tapping on the door there. Tap, 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 tap. And when I opened the door, I knew he didn't want to go out. We'd already been out for a good walk this morning. But he was just tap, tap, tapping at the door. And when I opened the door, he just stuck his nose up and he was like, mm. I said, boy, that is the scent of autumn. So yeah, it won't be long. I'm going to cast on another hat this evening. Um, exactly the same recipe, but to showcase a different colour pom-pom and a different yarn combination. My next finished thing is my Ruthie. Now I ask you not to judge her. She desperately desperately needs a visit to the spa as we knew she would. We said last week she was gonna look a bit rough until she'd been to the spa and you know she's not she's not at her best. She will be next week when I show you her. So I'm not going to go into too many details. I spoke about it at length last week and I will show her to her full glory next week. But she is finished. Huge thank you to everybody who bought a, um, what's on my jumper? Yeah, huge thank you to anybody that bought a, a kit that we put in the shop. There are just a handful left and to buy it un with the shawl unseen was really, really generous. So thank you. And we are taking loads of these to Southern Wool with loads of other colours in the fluff as well. We've got a teal, we've got a baby pink, we've got like a pickle green. Um, what other colours have we done? Like a kingfisher blue. We've got, yeah, some really lovely colours coming along to us with us to Southern Wall and again they'll be on the website after. So that's Ruthie. For anybody that was concerned about playing yarn chicken with the fluff you absolutely won't. I've got loads left, loads, about a gram and a bit which sounds like nothing but in this that's quite a lot as you can see. I've loved this, I've loved every stitch. Is she perfect? Absolutely not. Have I many times throughout the shawl, I've got to the end. Oh, when I say she isn't perfect, the pattern is, it's user error, it's knitter error. There's been many times when I've got to the end of a row and I've had an extra stitch. So I've just knit two together. If I'm missing a stitch, I've done a yarn, you know, I've done a pick up. I've just fudged it. And overall, you, you're not going to tell, are you? You'll never know where those... I think there's probably throughout the shawl five or six spots where I've had to fudge the numbers. Does that mean on that section that the eyelets are slightly off? Perhaps. 
but again I don't think when it's around my neck in the grand scheme of things you're going to ever tell. I've loved it, really really enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. Something that's been on my mind from the minute I cast on, in fact I said it to Nick immediately within the first stripe and I, I am not a designer and this is not in any shape way or form a criticism it was just an observation that I still observe I kind of wish it wasn't such a blunt beginning to the shawl and by that I mean I wish it tapered where you start with three stitches and then increase to a point you know rather than it being a cast on however many 30 I don't know whatever I don't know why I felt that I, I don't know it's just I guess it's just how I've always done them but I mean it's beautiful I love it and that is not in any way a criticism it was just merely an observation I love it I can't wait to give her a spa treatment and then I can show her off properly. But yes, so that's Rufy. You could even wear her that way, couldn't you? Just as a, I quite often wear scarves like that. I don't think in this case that will show her to her best, but we'll play around with her next week. Last week we were talking about um, what re-watching podcasts of old, weren't we? Do you remember? And I was saying how it made me quite sentimental about it evoked emotions and of the time and and remembering moments in time that um, that were poignant, I guess, in my life at the stage of watching. Oh look, I've got my fidgeter again. Go away. <laughs> I do fidget like that. I, I, yeah, maybe I ought to just have it and hold it down here. What was I saying? See, I've got to sidetrack myself now. Yeah, we were getting all sentimental last week, weren't we? We were revisiting podcasts of old and watching like, the first podcast that I found and introduced me to this to this community, this wider community and this friendship we now share. And remembering points in time where knitting podcasts have really got us through a, a really tricky time that have supported us through, you know, grief and all of life's challenges, whatever they may look like. When I've been sat at Megan's hospital bed last year when she was in hospital and I could just plug in my earbuds and know that... At, three in the morning I had a friend on the screen to keep me company I think we've all got that connection with with podcasts and YouTube and Instagram and that sort of thing and yeah when it just yeah I've just thought about it a lot this week and reflected upon it and then it got me thinking about yarn and how we can be sentimental with with our yarn and our collection and our project bags and things and but more so yarn in that we have these special skeins that we won't use because they're so special <laughs> and actually I think the maker of any of these products would would rather you use them and then they'll give you another you know or you get another maybe I shouldn't say that but you know what I mean but I totally understand how we all have these special skeins that we just hold on to because they're so dear to us and I've got some and I thought I'd share them with you so for my 40th birthday I had just just really got into hand dyed yarn um, and I was part of a mini skein club from a dye, a dye company called Little French Meadow who sadly no longer dye now Yola and Alison, um, they were friends, beautiful, beautiful yarns, and, but yeah, they no longer die, unfortunately. And I read, I'd said to Nick, what I would really like for my birthday is a box of cakes, yarn cakes. 
and between us we collaborated with Little French Meadow who again through Instagram I had formed a connection with and yeah they happily put this box together for Nick. I had no idea about the colours. Um, I think at the time I, I had, did I give some idea of of my favourite cake, like nom 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 cake. Um, but yeah, I just left it to their creativity because what they dyed was always so beautiful. And I got the said box of cakes, six of them, and I've never knit one because I just love them. And they're just so precious to me. But I'm 50 next year, so I've held on to these treasures for nearly a decade. So before my 50th birthday I've pulled out three and I'm going to knit them before my 50th birthday and I'm going to make myself some socks. I'll show you. They are in crinkly bags. I keep my personal yarn in cellophane bags just to keep the moths away. This one is Battenberg cake which I'm sure you can see why it's called Battenberg. These are not going to be cast on any time soon because of sample knitting for the shows and things. But um, yeah, later in the year when we take a break in October. But my birthday's not till next year, so that one was Battenberg cake. This one I love. And this one is peach macaron. Peach and mocha macaroon. Isn't it lovely? This, that one's on a sparkle base, this one, which I love sparkle yarn. That one. And then the last one I've pulled out is Blueberry Muffin, which I just love as well. So before my 50th birthday, I'm going to have three cake themed pairs of socks on my needles. So do you do you treasure your special skeins? Is this perhaps a knit along we could do together? Could we have perhaps a, well, I don't know, we'd have to come up with some title, wouldn't we? But about releasing those special, special skeins from stash and knitting them into something wonderful. Oh, it's raining. I love the sound of rain on the caravan roof. Love it. Proper cosy. Speaking of cosy, my next finished thing that I've cast on and finished since we spoke last week is da -da, another Maxine hot water bottle cover. I say another because this is my third and I have a fourth to do. Isn't it amazing? It is, it's got a hot water bottle in it. If you've um, yet to make one of these, or indeed if you do make one of these, the way I block it is to put in a hot, I, I obviously do all the soaking in, um, in the spa bath, we give it a spa, and then I wrap it in a towel, squeak, you know, stamp on it, get all the excess out. And then I fill a hot water bottle with boiling hot, well, near boiling hot water, and then I block the cover with the hot water in it and the, the warmth really just dries it overnight. I love it. So the Maxine hot water bottle cover is by Laura Penrose of Penrose Knits and I was lucky enough to test this, this pattern for Laura and this was, I'm not, my tail's still hanging out. This was the cover I test knit with, this combination of colours. And at the time we put kits together for these on the website that were incredibly popular. And we've taken kits to every show we've done since and they have been popular too. So we've done that one. And then for, is it for Wonderwall? I know it was at the same time when we released kits at the time of the pattern release I wanted to have two two samples in in different combinations hello darling you want to come up come on in oh well I do love the rain Jeff doesn't 
Come on then, darling. It's okay. It's all right. You're okay. I know. Come on then. Come on. I know, darling. You don't like the rain, do you? It's scary. I know. Poor sweet boy. next to mum. Come on then. Sit down there next to mum. There you go. There we go. You sit there with me. There you go. Anyway, all that to say, um, we will be taking kits along to both Southern Wool and Yarndale with us and obviously they'll be on the website in between. Laura's very kindly given us a license to print the pattern. Um, so any kit that's bought from us will have a copy of a printed pattern in, which is just lovely. If you've never done colour work before, honestly, I can't high, more highly recommend this pattern as a first, as a first colour work project. Laura's been so, so, so clever with her design in that she has She's designed it to be completely user friendly. So there's never more than two colours in a row. There's never a point where you need to really catch floats. There's no huge gap between colours. And actually, even if you did need to catch floats, this is not something that's going to be taken on and off. And so I wouldn't even worry about it then, you know. But it really is just the most perfect introduction to colour work. If you're a more advanced knitter of colour work technique, then you'll breeze through this. I, I love it. If you're looking for Christmas holiday gift ideas, I can't recommend this pattern enough. I love it. Oh, well, so I've knit three. <laughs> and I've got one more to make. I'll be casting on again this week. Um, to get my final sample made because we've put kits together in in a real typical Christmas palette so it's um, like a forest green a bright Christmas red our red red wine colorway there's some pickle green in there some icy snow so yeah I'm really looking forward to doing that combination We often get asked, I think there's five colours, let me just, one, two, three, yeah, five colours in this colour work collection. Oh, again, this is another example. I use the, the Tweed Yarn is DK and these, the colour work is our Pick and Mix Minis, which are four ply and they're held double. And again, there is no differentiation between the mini, the four ply held double and the DK. There's no ridge, there's no raised texture. It's flawless. There's no difference at all. It, it's, yeah, I've really loved, loved that experience and that experimentation. We often get asked about putting palettes together for things like this and how we know or how we can make sure they're all going to work. And what I would say is, um, yes, pick five colours that you that you like as a palette, as a collection, but then break them down. So with the pattern in your hand, you know here that you're going to have the green, the pink and the peach. So they all work together. So then looking at this section, you know the green and the peach is going to be okay together. Where's peach used again? I will appear it's a repeat of that so we know they work together. Then this section, you've got the green. So what goes with the green, the yellow and the blue? They all work together. So then looking at this chart, that yellow is here, that blue is there. So they work together. And then you've got the pink they work together. So we break it down into its component parts rather than looking at it as a whole. Does that make sense? Maybe I can do a, a proper different little video about that if, if that's useful to anybody. And I can show you with, with some minis and play around, show you what we do.
so cozy. It is warm. I love doing these. I'm not a fast knitter at all. Not at all. Um, I am an English thrower. I don't speed knit. I don't try and rush my way through it. But this week I've really been focusing because I needed to. And in a week I've done the hot water bottle cover, the hat and finished off Ruthie. So I think it shows if we scroll less and be mindful of our time, just what I can achieve. That's been really useful. But I think, you know, for most people, this is quite a quick knit, especially if you're looking for Christmas gifts. Yeah, that's the Maxine. She's a joy, isn't she? Doesn't it amaze, it amazes me how all the different colour palettes make it look slightly different or give it a different vibe from sort of this poppy one to this sort of boho and then this sort of, I don't know what I'd describe that one as, just pretty. So there we go, that's all that I've been making this week. So what does next week look like? Next week is our last sort of die week for the show. Um, more sample knitting for me. I do apologise if this has come across as a bit of a 40 minute infomercial. It It's not my intention and I, um, yeah, I, I hope that's not coming across that way. But at the minute, literally all I'm knitting is stuff for for work. But, you know, knitting is knitting, isn't it? And hopefully you've still found some, some joy in coming to visit with us. I think I'm going to make a hot drink, a hot bimpto. Give my little poodle a cuddle. He's still sat down here. Give Jeff a little cuddle. And... Um, just chill out for an hour before we start dinner. Thank you so, so much for coming to spend some time with me. Um, time is such a precious commodity, isn't it? So I really, really appreciate you spending some of your crafting time with me. Oh, just tell me before I go, how do you spend this time we, we have together? I had an email from Darlene in, um, in America. Hello, Darlene. And she was telling me oh, lots of lovely things. But anyway, one of the things we, we, we're so alike in so many ways. And I, I so often watch podcasts and things while I'm getting dinner ready. And I'm usually in the kitchen on my own preparing the evening meal. And that's when I'll pop on a couple of podcasts and I'll just happily potter away doing dinner cleaning up after dinner, doing the dishes, whatever, loading the dishwasher. And in the background, just one of my friends chatting away, you know. And I wonder how many of you do that. Interesting, isn't it? Or maybe not. Maybe it's Dolly's dishwater. Anyway, I'm going. Waffling. Jingle waffle. Lots of love, darlings. And I'll see you next week. Take care.